I'm with Bellator bantamweight champ Zach McCoskey. Zach, last time we spoke, uh, you were victorious in a non-title fight over Ryan Roberts. Now you get a real title fight coming up. Talk about how you feel going against Eduardo Dantes. Oh, I feel good. I mean, uh, I think Eduardo is an amazing opponent and it presents a lot of problems, you know, he's extremely well-rounded, comes from a phenomenal camp, he's got a big reach advantage, height advantage, I hate fighting tall guys, never fun, but I mean, uh, I think he's going to be probably the toughest fight I've, I've had yet, you know, I think uh, it's kind of like, uh, similar to an Ed West type of fight, you know, he's got that kind of good on the ground, good, good striker, uh, and, and same, same kind of height advantage, and uh, I think Eduardo's a little more refined than Ed. I think he has maybe a little bit more power, but uh, I think there's some things Ed does better as well. But uh, I don't know, maybe I need to call Ed to train for this fight. What do you think? We'll see. I, I mean, I think it's going to be a great fight, and then, uh, it'll be an honor to fight him. So. Did you, knowing the, the opponents in the beginning of the tournament, did you see these two, Villa and Dantes, get, end up in the final? Uh, did anything surprise you with the, uh, with the guys in the tournament this season? Yeah, I mean... Um, in all honesty, when I picked the quarterfinal matchups, I picked both of them to lose in the quarters. Um, I thought Warren would be able to beat, up, beat Vila just by wearing them out, using his size, kind of like wearing them down, not trying to box with them. And I thought Wilson uh, had a great style to beat Dantes. So as long as he could get him down, I thought he would you know, be able to control the action on the ground. So, um, you know, I trained with Wilson. So I got two great fights to look at for as far as Dantes. I mean, uh, he fought a guy who's my size and a southpaw like, as Wilson. And then he, he fought Vila tonight, who's my size and a wrestler. So I got some good fights to watch. He beat both those guys, so uh, I have to be better th than they were. So. And now you came out in the uh, the post fight interview, obviously with a uh, tongue in cheek, with your uh, fun size mantra standing on the stool. What can you look to take advantage of the size advantage that he has? Uh, you being that shorter and quicker using your wrestling, what uh, what are you going to look to do uh, face with that kind of size advantage? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think. Uh Fighting a guy that hot, that tall, I can't I can't stay on the outside uh, of his punches, you know. I can't stay out where he can hit me and I can't hit him. I have to be out or all the way in, and I have to fight smart, you know. Um, he, he's really he's really good at striking and not just punching, you know. He mixes in knees and kicks really well, but if I time it right, those are all takedown opportunities. So um, I have to be on my game, no question. And uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. And um, you feel uh, you feel pressure having this belt for a while, and that seeing seeing a title holder like Eddie Alvarez lose his belt is that, does that put more pressure on you to hold on to yours? I think I felt more pressure. Well, we'll see. I think I felt more pressure for the non-title fights because you know it's not at stake. And uh, in my mind, if, if you you would lose as you hold the title in a non-title bout, it kind of you know diminishes what the title really means. So um, I felt a lot of pressure in those non-title fights, but. Uh, when the, uh, the belt's on the line, uh, uh, you know, I just have to go out there and fight. I think everybody understands, uh, or at least I, I would think that, you know, you know, we're competing in a sport and, and winning and winning it as much as a part of it as losing. And uh, you have to be able to ride the ups and downs in both of them and learn from your mistakes and, and, and you know, just become better from, from all of it. So uh, I know that's what Eddie's doing, and, and you know, uh, if that happens to me, so be it. But, you know, I'll do everything I can to... Uh, to be Dantes. And uh, touch about uh, touch on your current training and uh, your training going forward, getting ready for uh, to defend your belt. Uh, you know, I'm always training. Uh, I'm always training hard, and it, it, it's funny. My coaches kind of always uh, criticize me because they say my uh, my training camps are almost no different from my my normal training when I'm when I'm not, you know, getting ready for a fight. So you know, I, I'm always in shape and always doing things. You know, the only things I'll do differently is. Uh, when I get a date for, for Dantes, I'll start to uh, do you know do some more conditioning. I have to get ready for a five round fight, which uh, you know I, I've done before, and I, I don't think he has. And um, uh, you know, I work some specific game plan stuff for him. I'll sit down with my coaches and we'll talk, and uh, that's about it. Looking to bring anyone in uh, to to uh, emulate his uh, his size advantage? Uh, like I said, maybe maybe Ed West. I'll have to talk to him and see what he's doing. I think I got some good guys, some good guys at the Fight Factory that are uh, you know good Muay Thai strikers, uh, and I think I got a really good good guy in uh, Alexander Baheza. He's been fighting at Popo. He's been fighting in Bellator. I think he's four and zero in Bellator now. He's a forty five er. Uh, awesome jujitsu. Um, Good Muay Thai, I think he'll be a good guy to train with too. He trains down the road with my buddy Wilson Hayes, and I've trained with him a bunch of times. So uh, I got some good guys in there to uh, to prepare me for his style, no question.
Right, well, we, uh, I know I am anxiously uh, anticipating you defending your belt next season. Uh, best of luck in training and in that title fight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.